Hey everyone, I wanted to make a video about using multi-body master parts. So the idea is that you build your assembly in one part file and the assembly parts are represented by solid bodies. Um, and then you can just push those solid bodies out to derived uh, parts and you can build your assembly with one part file. And the, the idea is that uh, each part in the assembly um, is constrained by the origins. You don't need constraints in the assembly in the typical sense. So this is the example I was thinking of using. So this is a, a little simple stool made out of one piece of 24 by 24 inch piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. And it has this handy diagram here. I just grabbed this from the internet. How to cut it out. So I've started with that sketch. I thought we could just build this and uh, make a quick video on how I would maybe flesh this assembly out. So I'm going to start with this profile to kind of build everything off of. Um, ideally, I'd probably constrain this point to the origin, but this will work for this demonstration. So I have my main sketch. Typically, I'd name it, but for this exercise, I, I won't bother. Um, so this defines most of what I need to know for this project. So I think the next most important uh, sketch would be this top view because it has the most most things being interfaced on this work plane. So I would sketch this. Um, I know this is the center point I want to use. There's going to be the top of this is going to be a circle and it's going to have a radius um, equal to this that's where it's cut from and then there's going to be kind of a cross section that happens like this I'm just going to draw some center lines because I find those helpful And I've set the thickness of the plywood down here with a parameter. So if I go here, oops, it's not the right one. I'll just do it like this for now. And I'll say list parameters. I only have one defined thickness. So I'll use that for both of these. And I'll make everything here except for this guy. Uh, reference geometry because I don't need to make profiles from these shapes and then I'll constrain the center lines here oh, I got the wrong uh, wrong dimension here I want thickness and then for the lengths of these guys they'll just be equal to this top dimension for now that's kind of what the underside of that stool circle looks like. <laughs> so the next thing I want to build into this, and I might just do it on another sketch to keep it simple. I'll make another sketch on this same work plane. And then I'll project these two edges. And then I know that I have these little supporting pieces in here. And their dimensions are the six by six it's over here and then I'll just make collinear constraints to those two projected edges that I brought in so that's that profile there so that's pretty easy so we have almost all the profiles we need here maybe we do let's see so I can start with one extrusion for this top and I'll go this way and I'll make it thickness, the thickness parameter, and I'll hit OK. And so here's where the multi-body part comes in. The next extrusion I make will be this little stiffener piece. I'll also say its thickness is that. The difference is, I'm going to say this is a new solid. So now that's a new body. And it's kind of treated like a separate entity in here. So I can turn the visibility off and they kind of act like two different parts within the same part file. And then the next body I want to make is this guy. 
But for now, I'm going to leave that uh, notch that needs to be in there out for now. And I'll, that'll make sense in a second here. Oops. But you saw what I did wrong there. I didn't make that a new body. So I'll make that a new body. And I'll also make it symmetrical. There we go. That's how I want that. Now I got some interference here. What happened? I probably didn't give this the right thickness. Yeah. Okay. Go in here. Thickness. There. Now that matches up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pattern this body. So instead of patterning the feature, I'm going to select body and I'm going to select make a new body. And then I'm going to select this solid. And the rotation axis will just be Oh, you know what? I, normally I would use a center plane, but I made this off kilter. So I'll go back in here and just because I like my features above my, or my work axis above my features. I'm just going to move my end apart and pull this back down. So now I can do a pattern, body, new body, select this guy and select that axis. And I'm just going to say, I want two of them. And they're going to be 90 degrees to one another. So now I got those two parts and they're interfering, which is fine. Because what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab this profile that I didn't use before. And I'm going to say cut through all. And I want it to do this body. And I want it to go both directions. So it's going to cut everything out of that's that, that first one that we made. So now I have that notch. Now I could have done another profile in the other direction, but I'm going to use this uh, combine tool. And I'm going to say, this is the base. And this first leg set is the, the tool body. But I want to keep that body. So I'm going to say, keep tool body. And I'm going to make that a cut. And I'm going to hit OK. So it turns the visibility off, but you can see where the notch wasn't uh, interfering to cut this other leg out. So turn this back on. So now those two pieces match up. And because this part gets reused, I'm not going to model that again. So that's all I'm going to do for my master part. And so now I can take these and I can rename them. So it makes more sense in my assembly. Top I'm going to call this uh, brace leg one, leg two. And I'll save this because I probably haven't done that yet. And then if I select all those bodies and I go make components, it'll uh, ask me what I want to name it. So instead of saying the uh, master part, I'm just going to say it's called stool and it's in uh, this blog folder. Um, do we want to create a new assembly? Yes. So if I already had created an assembly, I could add these to one I've already made, but this is a brand new one. So I'm just going to say it's in this, uh, this folder here. So I'm going to save that, hit next. It's going to ask me which types these are. I could have made this out of sheet metal. Uh, it would have made making flat patterns of the pieces okay, but for this example, Standard parts are fine. BOM structure is fine. So I hit OK there. And there we go. So the, the beauty of this is I don't have any constraints. I don't need to constrain these to one another. They're just grounded to the origin. And that'll always work because wherever those bodies exist in that master part are where they're going to exist here. So the only thing I need to do to this one is I need to grab that axis that was in my master part to make a pattern with because I want to pattern this thing around instead of just copying it and constraining it a bunch of times it'll be better if it's a pattern so I'm going to open up this part I'm going to edit the derived part that was created through the make components command and I'm just going to add this axis to this top piece so now if I go there I can see that guy's in there so if I go to the assembly now I can pattern this part um, oh, around this axis four times 90 degrees that's perfect that's exactly what I want and there we go um, 
Typically, I would go back in here and turn the visibility of this off. Leave that. And there. There's my stool. Um, everything's kind of linked and locked in, and it's solid. So if I go back to my master part and change something, um, let's see what would be a good thing to change. I guess if I made this uh, a one inch over here and I linked this one here, I can now make this an inch bigger and it should all work out kind of the same. So hit okay there. This guy updates. Now if I go here, I uh, should be able to hit this update and boom, we got our new Bigger diameter stool, but skinnier leg. So just a, I don't know, quick video showing how I would build this. And um, hopefully that's helpful to somebody. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.